Right, up next, against number three on the PBA Tour points list, despite being a Weber Cup rookie, Tom Doherty. This promises to be a really interesting one as we get a good look at the man they call the Rebel in Doherty and Don Barrett loving being back in, the, in front of the European fans. So let's head over to the commentary box for this one where Matt McNeil is alongside Chris Barnes and Phil Yates. Yeah, thanks very much. Delighted to have the American captain in the commentary box who's dashed up to see his counterpart take on one of the rookies on his side. Well, happy to be here, and uh, we're probably fortunate to not be down 3-0 right now, so uh, uh, a little scary here in the early part of the practice session. Tom's first two balls did not hook at all and uh, had a little, a little panic going on for a minute, but I think we've solved the problem. Going back to your singles, Chris, it was a real thriller, wasn't it? And you finished off superbly with those five consecutive strikes. I had a pretty lucky one there in the middle, but uh, was able to put enough pressure on to make him show up, and you never know what happens in those situations. And Tom Doherty starting off with a perfect strike. Tom electing to use that urethane bone ball we've been talking about earlier. Chris, was that your strategy g coming in? Yeah, really the reason why we picked the pattern is because all of our guys, with the exception of me, use urethane a ton, and they're really, really good with it. Uh, ironically, it's really not turned into being so much of that at all. Um, I don't anticipate Kyle really throwing it at all, and uh, Simo did not throw it either. And I, don't know. and I did, and it didn't work out very well, so... Uh, you know, whatever perceived advantage we might have had by going to urethane has really turned into something completely different. What a great shot that was. Doherty's had an amazing start to his Weber Cup experience. Remember, he had two strikes in his frames in the Baker match. Tom leaving the 3-6-10, looked like that shot was pulled a bit left the target. Fortunate to break the seven out of that combination and just leave himself a 3-6-10 for the spare. Tom using a, a, a fairly, I guess, unconventional approach by most two-handers where he uses a spare ball with a thumb in it and he actually throws a bit of a backup ball at, uh, at spares and came in handy right there where traditionally you would have chopped the three off, off the, or the three six off the ten and, and was able to make it. Chris, you know, we've been talking about all this talk about spares makes me kind of just look over the first three matches. You had three missed single pins, all very on characteristics from your players. Anything that's going on on your bench you guys talking about? Ooh, a bit unlucky there. Yeah, no, we are talking about it. The corners are a little bit sticky, and, and uh, but a lot of it is it, it, we just haven't had a lot of practice, and we spent most of that trying to figure out what we we're going to do with patterns and strikes, and honestly, we just didn't throw a lot of spares, and uh, the lanes are hooking a lot at spares on this particular pattern, and uh, so we've all had to make a little bit of adjustment. We just need to pay a little bit more attention. And you're not alone in that. Literally not. I mean, Stu's didn't, was inconsequential, but uh, I mean, we've had five missed single pins, I think, so far and it, from a group that this group doesn't miss very many. Very uncharacteristic, and like you said, it's just, I've always said generally spare shooting is, is, or when it's bad, it's a lack of focus and clear thought. Yeah, I agree, and almost always that's the case. And in some cases, just guys haven't thrown their, their spare balls a whole lot here because of uh, a little bit of a lack of, of uh, practice time and the number of days in between. And so, uh, uh, but that's not really an excuse because we do it for a living and it's really not a hard thing to repeat. It's the easiest thing we actually do. Well, let's see if Dom can get back on track here in the third frame. 
Yeah, honestly, it looked like somebody distracting or something happened on that spare, too, where, uh, uh, you know, his reaction, I didn't see exactly what it is. We're kind of blocked over here from what might have caught his eye, but there has been some movement so that's a little bit unusual down lane, and, and that's part of the uh, charm and character of this, uh, this environment is there is a lot more activity way closer to the lane than we normally have. Dirty from Riverview in Florida. Won the World Championship in March in Tampa. Having the year of his life. Yeah, he's a very unique uh, no thumb bowler because he does not use his other hand. And how strong you have to be to do what he does is uh, it, it's very unique. There's only been a couple of players that I know of that have achieved a professional status doing it the way he does. Super strong. Uh, and uh, and like you said, Phil, he's had the best year of his career by uh, leaps and bounds. And, uh, you know, I felt like I was certainly worthy of a selection this year at the, you know, for this Weber Cup. Is that fun? I guess. That championship yeah. coming at the World Series of Bowling this year, which was in Tampa, in uh, one of the centers that Tom actually grew up in. So he felt right at home there. Just, just get there. He doesn't really bowl that much anymore. It, it, it got portrayed as his home house, which it's not really. He lives 45 minutes from there, but uh, uh, did have a little bit of support. There wasn't really fans allowed, so there, that wasn't even particularly advantage either. Maybe a little bit of home knowledge, but when you bowl the World, the World Series, you're not bowling against the guys you bowl against in league. So uh, uh, quite an accomplishment. I always thought it was it was harder to bowl in your home city, uh, especially when I was younger. Uh, but to come in like that and do what he did was an exceptional feat. Absolutely. One of the great performances I, I'd put up there that I've, I've seen. All week long, he was very dominant. Tried to help that one a little bit after the last one, uh, flat 10, and uh, or two pin, I'm sorry, and just got it into the lane. And, and we're seeing on this lighter volume pattern, the front starting to pick up already, even after only, you know, 10 shots effectively. You think that's what happened to Anthony Simons and he just got behind the move, which transitioned quicker than you guys had thought it would. Well, honestly, it seems like all the guys that are smaller angles are not striking very much so far. A lot of ring tens uh, on the really good shots, and those are the ones that hurt. Flat tens are flat tens, but uh, uh, it's the ringing tens that are getting us in trouble, uh, shutting the angles down. So, say our next two guys are both planning on throwing urethane, but uh, right now I'm not sure that's actually actually the best play. Well, Dom certainly electing to use more of those wide open, steeper angles through the front part of the lane, standing more to the left, projecting it to the right. Let's see if it continues to pay dividends for him. It doesn't really hurt him as much as you would think because of the significant count advantage with Tom having two seven counts already. The part that makes it hard is it's it's been a difficult spare shooting day already, and uh, and this one's no bargain on the on the easiest of patterns. <laughs> well, speak of the devil, and he appears a, another missed makeable and unforced air for the Europeans as we're through five frames and. Tom, who really hasn't bowled that great of a game, finds himself with a five-pin lead. We are seeing all sorts so far. Oh, it tickled those down like they were on strings right there. Uh, that's the example of the power and, and what the no thumb uh, release can give you is an extra 80 to 100 revs and you get some, some extra pin action that you wouldn't normally get. Now, do you think Tom expected that shot to be higher in the pocket? Absolutely. That was a move left and slower. Uh, you know, Tom's been, had an extremely successful career, but he's very open about the fact that he was very amped up. And so these first couple of shots were going to be difficult for him to calm down and get into the match. And, 
The one thing that Dom's open does is it gives him a lead, and now he's five frames in, is able to, he's got a feel for the lane. That was a move left, slowed down, didn't hook as much as he wanted, but now he can settle in. And you see Tom, Dom seeing some of the same thing. I think he expected that shot to hook back, just like you said, Phil. So I think he's, it's, uh, there, there's some cat and mouse going on. There's some urethane carry down that uh, certainly happens much faster than normal with uh, reactive balls. What a momentum shift over the last couple of frames here. Yeah, and it, you know, Chris said shocking, and that's, you know, from my my perspective as a as a player rep out on the out on the professional tours, and when you see players of this caliber miss so many makeable spares, it's it's very uncharacteristic. As Chris was talking about, this this group as a whole is a pretty good group of spare shooters on the national tour. Oh, hey. He liked that one early. He was saying, oh, baby, and it was only halfway down the lane for a guy who's struggled to hit the pocket uh, nearly as consistently as he normally does. He knew he threw that one. Uh, 38 feet is a very tricky distance, and this lane, uh, while it's an insult for this, is 15 years old, so that's a pretty established track area, which makes the break point, you know, 8, 9, 10 on the surface, but 38 feet puts it at 5, 6, 7, and so... Guys are struggling to figure out which side of that bump that they want to play. Now that, that plays the surface characteristic, which is 8, 9, 10. But the, the lane doesn't have, the, the pattern doesn't have a lot of hold at that distance yet. Uh, although it seems to be developing pretty quickly at the moment. And that's why you see so much transition and guys getting fooled as they try and figure out which side of that, that bump to play on. Well, I think Tom let him go with the, with the urethane ball, the slower, smoother ball reaction, and then just use his skill and his ability to dial it in. He has done so thus far the last two shots. Let's see what he does here in the eighth. And now he's got it. This is, this is why we picked the pattern, is because uh, both Chris Vi and Doherty are excellent with urethane um, and, and have a... And, and really, Team Europe does not particularly like to throw it other than Jesper. And uh, it really hasn't played out that way much, but this is this is where we thought we would have an advantage. It just hasn't played across the board as much as we thought it might. That, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, was much needed from Don Barris. Well, you can see Dom getting this ball way further right than he intended, but that power that he creates, able to throw the pins around and get a late hit on the 10 and keep Europe within arm's reach of this match. Dory needs one strike or two spares. This one up. And that one should even things up with Dom's max possible score at 237 and Doherty already at 233. He'll need five pins in his next two shots. Do you think, Chris, if you're Dom, you maybe try something to maybe moving a little bit in or, or maybe you try something to, to help show the, the bench something or give them a read? Not really watching them practice on this. They were pretty committed to not throwing urethane, and so they all have their own ideas about which reactive balls are going to throw. And, um, so he might move deeper and, and maybe something a little bit cleaner there, but I don't, I don't particularly think so. Uh, is he bowling the next doubles match as well? He is indeed. It's yes. Don Barton, Thomas Larson against Tom Doherty and Chris Vai. And, and, Larson, as we saw earlier, will definitely be playing further right. Uh, I do think, actually, the urethane gives him a little bit more hold. Uh, and he's the only player out there using, you know, be, that will be able to use it. I see Dory moving in with reactive, so he's going to get a look at something else, just in case. Vi has the same thing, where he can get out of that uh, urethane, to be honest, on all the patterns across the board. He's looked the most comfortable with his ball reaction, whether that holds up after Six more strip and runs. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah, it's so much easier to calculate on those. Well, the, plus one well, it counts. That's the highest score so far in 
any of the four contests we've seen. 263 from the rookie. And we're seeing a ball change here for Dom. He's, like you said, Chris, he's going to go to a cleaner ball and try to open it up. Came off it harder than expect. So far, everybody that's made a change ball ball wise has done that. Uh, Stu from a Zen Master to a Zen, me from a urethane ball to an X2, Dom from uh, I, I'm not as familiar with his equipment, but that is, that is a definite ball down from that. It's cleaner and come off of it. Well, 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 lots of mistakes from Dominic Barrett. Plenty of strikes in the end from Tom Dozy. And that's why the end scoreline was so emphatic in favour of the American rookie. Thrust and counter thrust here. It's 2-2.